Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. When we look at 9-11, we flip it as November 9th. So that's the reason why I'm bringing this to you. We had Bush start the Patriot Act that changed the world forever. Surveillance on the American citizens went from Bush Jr. to Obama in 2019. It was extended, but then came up again 2020. Trump advised that he would veto it. But we all know it's part of the Hegelian dialectic because now we have Biden in and we know for a fact he's going to push it through. Back to surveillance, back to monitoring everybody. And we know they need this when we're moving over to the digital economy. Y'all enjoy the video. Please be seated. Welcome. Thanks for the thanks for the applause. As we wage the war on terror overseas, we're also going after the terrorists here at home. And one of the most important tools we have used to protect the American people is the Patriot Act. Patriot Act closed dangerous gaps in America's law enforcement and intelligence capabilities, gaps the terrorists exploited when they attacked us on September the 11th. People's House. I'm going to sign, in a few moments, I'll be signing the USA Patriot Improvement and Reauthorization Act. This is a really important piece of legislation. appropriate reforms to Section 215 of the Patriot Act, the program that collects telephone records. As I've said, this program is an important tool in our effort to disrupt terrorist plots, and it does not allow the government to listen to any phone calls without a warrant. But given the scale of this program, I understand the concerns of those who would worry that it could be subject to abuse. So after having a dialogue with members of Congress, and civil libertarians, I believe that there are steps we can take to give the American people additional confidence that there are additional safeguards against abuse. Earlier, I had the chance to conduct the first TV interview with the reporter who broke this story wide open, Glenn Greenwald of The Guardian. Congratulations on the scoop. Explain for our viewers why this is important. It's important because people have understood that the law that this was done under, which is the Patriot Act, enacted in the wake of 9-11, was a law that allowed the government very broad powers to get records about people with a lower level of suspicion than probable cause, the traditional standard. So it's always been assumed that under the Patriot Act, if the government had even any suspicion that you were involved in a crime or terrorism, they could get a lot of information about you. What this court order does that makes it so striking is that it's not directed at any individuals who who they believe or have suspicion uh, or committing crimes or part of a terrorist organization, it's collecting the phone records of every single customer of Verizon Business and finding out every single call that they've made internationally and locally. So it's indiscriminate and it's sweeping. It's a government program designed to collect information about all Americans, not just people where they believe there's reason to think they've done anything wrong. And based on my conversations with government officials today, it seems that this is basically just a continuation of what has been going on since the Bush administration introduced it in 2006, that even though the order runs from April 25th through July 19th of this specific uh, court document that you obtained, uh, that it's not specific to any particular crime or terrorist investigation. It is just a widespread continuation for this particular uh, telecommunications organization. Is that your understanding as well? When it was discovered that the Bush administration was collecting millions of telephone records of innocent Americans, it was in a massive controversy. And I think there was an assumption, at least among a lot of people, that the Obama administration was not continuing these programs. These were programs instituted and justified by the 9-11 attacks. And so this is the first evidence that more than a decade later, the government is still engaged in what until 10 years ago was considered unthinkable types of surveillance, a massive surveillance net um, 
overall people. And the problem is, is that this is all kept so completely secret. Why was this court order that we obtained marked top secret and closely guarded? It doesn't harm national security for us to know about it. We should have this debate in the open. Let the Obama administration talk about why they're collecting these records, whether it's part of a larger program, and then let's debate whether we as a society want to live with a government that knows everything that, that we're doing, regardless of whether we've done anything wrong. Here's what a senior administration official uh, said in response uh, to your scoop. Uh, they wouldn't specifically confirm um, the court order, but they said, quote, information of the sort described in the Guardian article has been a critical tool in protecting the nation from terrorist threats to the United States as it allows counterterrorism personnel to discover whether known or suspected terrorists have been in contact with other persons who may be engaged in terrorist activities, particularly people located inside the United States. What's your response? Any time that you report on anything that the government does in secret and they get caught doing things that Americans would be stunned to learn they're doing, it's almost like you just wind them up and they just yell the word terrorism and hope that if they say the word terrorist enough times, it'll scare people into accepting what it is that they've done. That's what that statement is. If what they're really doing is what they claim they're doing in that statement, which is targeting actual terrorists or people they suspect of terrorist activity, why aren't they going to the court and specifically naming those people and giving information to the court to let the court know that they're actually engaged in wrongdoing or there's reason to believe and monitoring them? Why is it that instead they are sweeping up everybody's phone records, millions and millions of people that allow the government at any time access to those databases to, if they're, they have political enemies, if there are people that the government dislikes for whatever reason, to have all kinds of leverage and power over them by knowing what it is they've done. If this were really a program directed at terrorists, we would have a much different conversation, but that's not what this is. This is indiscriminate and aimed at all Americans, not just ones who they call terrorists. And as your article points out, Glenn, uh, this is not the administration doing it on its own. Congress is briefed on it. There is a FISA court that is involved in it. Uh, in fact, uh, you suggest in your article uh, that uh, Senators Ron Wyden and Mark Udall, these Democratic senators, uh, have been warning the public perhaps about this. They wrote in a letter to the Attorney General back in March 2012 uh, that they were specifically referring to documents sent to Congress in relation to the Patriot Act. Quote, these documents are so highly classified that most members of Congress do not have any staff who are cleared to read them. As a result, we can state with confidence that most of our colleagues in the House and Senate are unfamiliar with these documents, that many of them would be surprised and angry to learn how the Patriot Act has been interpreted in secret. Do you think that they think that the members of Congress who are briefed on this stuff, uh, on this classified material, do you think they think there is sufficient congressional oversight over programs like this one? Absolutely not. I mean, and, and, and the, the, the example of these two senators is really remarkable and, and answers your question so perfectly. These are Democratic Party senators who are loyal to President Obama and to their party who have spent years now saying, please listen to us. What the Obama administration is doing in interpreting the Patriot Act is so warped and distorted and it vests themselves with such extremist surveillance policy powers over the United States and American citizens that Americans, in their words, would be stunned to learn what the Obama administration is doing. So you can have this procedure where you tell members of Congress or a certain number of them what it is that you're doing, but when you hamstring them and make it a crime for them to do anything about it, to talk about it in public, to introduce legislation about it, which is what has happened, to show their staffs what it is that, that is being done, you make this oversight, quote unquote, completely impotent. And you essentially annex these institutions. So you say, well, we've told them they're involved, but you prevent them from doing anything about it. It's symbolic oversight only, and it's completely meaningless. Kentucky, Mr. Massey is recognized. Mr. Speaker, some of my colleagues today will offer a bill to reauthorize the Patriot Act. It'll have the thin varnish of reform on it, designed to whitewash the egregious constitutional violations that have been going on. But it's the Americans who are going to be shellacked by this legislation and the process used to pass it. I want to read the Fourth Amendment and part of the Fifth Amendment here today on the floor to the Constitution. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person, persons or things to be seized. And the Fifth Amendment says, nor shall any person be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. 
So let's think about some of these words because they're being treated as if they're curse words or dirty words today. Warrant, due process, probable cause. These are all things that are guaranteed as rights for all Americans in the Constitution. And none of those can be guaranteed without transparency. We can't have star chambers and kangaroo courts. This has to happen in daylight and it has to be reviewable by the people in order to know that these things are true. So these things, they're inconvenient. A warrant, due process, probable cause. They're inconvenient for investigators. They're inconvenient for prosecutors. They sometimes get in the way. They make the job a little bit harder of finding the criminals, of finding the terrorists. But they're guaranteed rights of all Americans. So we have to keep them in the process. But let me talk about the legislative process here today. And I want to challenge the authors of this bill to come down here and defend what they have done. This bill started out in a committee. This is how it's supposed to happen. At the base bill. And then as the debate started getting underway, oh, it got inconvenient. Things were said that people didn't want to be said. Amendments were offered to make it more constitutional. They didn't like that. What did they do? The chairman of the committee pulled the bill canceled the hearing, canceled the markup of this bill, and they took it behind closed doors. They took it into the back room to write it. They took it into the back room to draft it. Why did they go into the back room? Because the lobbyists aren't in the committee. The deep state doesn't get a vote on the committee. So they got them in the back room with them. The lobbyists in the deep state help draft this bill that we're going to vote on today. And how much time do we have to review it? Less than 24 hours. Last night is when they made the text available. There's a rule in this House that guarantees 72 hours to review a bill. They're going to suspend that rule here in a few minutes. And people will willingly vote to suspend that rule so they can ram this bill through so that they can reauthorize the unconstitutional provisions of the Patriot Act. Now, I understand terrorists foreign terrorists don't have constitutional rights. So that's why the Patriot Act and the For Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act were passed, so that those, those impediments wouldn't be in the way when you're going after terrorists, foreign terrorists. But everybody's presumed innocent until proven guilty. So we need to maintain that. And you know, one of the worst things that's happened as a result of the FISA and the Patriot Act is that a presidential candidate was spied on. He's now the president. He's now the president. He overcame that. But this bill should fix that. Never again should a candidate, presidential, congressional, city councilman, never again should they be spied on using these tools that are supposed to go after terrorists, after foreigners. So I urge my colleagues in the House, well, the ones who've authored this bill, I urge them to get down here and defend what they've done. I urge them to come down here and explain why they don't want us to have, they don't want you to have 72 hours to look at this bill. Come down and defend that. And then for all of my other colleagues here in the House, I urge you to vote no. And for my friends in the Senate, vote no as well. And if this should make it to the president's desk, which I fear it's going to, I fear it's going to be on his desk, and he has some unwise or insincere counselors right now. I urge the president, if this should make it to his desk, to remember what they did to him with this legislation. Remember, and I urge him to veto this bill if it should get there this week. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time.